Hello everyone, welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. We had the opportunity to speak with director Dan Wallman about his film Geoni, Valley of Strength. This is a story about love and the beginning of modern day Israel. Let's take a closer look. Whenever you start the process of developing a film, there is uh, a lot of excitement. And uh, this film is very powerful. Tell us why you decided to create this film. Well, uh, actually, you know, the film Gay on Me or Valley of Strength is based on a novel. And, you know, what started it was the fact that I read the novel. It's not that someone told me that, you know, this would make a great film. I simply read it because I like reading. And there was two things that really uh, attracted me in the novel. And one of them is the human story of a woman who gets married, is forced to get married to a man because of lack of funds, because of problems. And uh, she has a problem. She cannot touch and she cannot be touched. The man is a widower and he's attracted to her. But, uh, you know, she doesn't allow him to touch her. So this uh, fascinated me. And uh, the second thing was, you know, the period. I admire the pioneers, the people who came, the first Aliyah at the end of the 19th century. And, uh, you know, there's something very visual about the novel. It takes place in the Galilee. And uh, so I thought all these, you know, things would make a good film. Did anything surprise you as you were filming this movie? Well, you know, I think that uh, the first thing is uh, the actors, because I did take a risk. I took an actress who, for the lead, uh, for, uh, I took an actress who just finished uh, theater school, uh, 23, 24 year old, no experience in cinema. Also the lead, so this is Tamar Alkan and Sion Ashkenazi, both of them have never been uh, in a film before. And uh, suddenly there was something, you know, and sometimes you really take a risk and suddenly you end up hating the characters that you choose. But this was uh, fantastic, suddenly there was a chemistry between them and I could see that that uh, uh, she has a lot of power. Um, it was, a, a, I don't, you know, first of all, it was a very difficult shoot because we decided that the most important element in the novel is the fact that there is no water. There was a real drought historically in these years of 1882, 1885. So we decided to shoot it in August. In Israel, August, in the Galilee, it is right. really terrible. Now, some of the actors, like, you know, the famous Yiddish actor Bodo, Annabella, Foreman, some of these actors are, you know, well over 75. And uh, still, you know, they came in the heat and the, this, and I was amazed, you know, with, the, with that. So it's not surprise, but really it was, uh, you know, it was exciting. You know, going back to your actors, because yes, yes. That, that's, uh, as, as a director, and yeah. trying to... Um, get into the heart of a book right. it's sometimes difficult to, um, to to bring that to life and act the actors have their own methods right. and trying to connect to their own uh, right. script right. was there anything specific that you did to say like you, this is the, this is the way the pioneers felt this is the way this is like, yeah. like how do you get to that level yeah well you know first of all you know there are all kinds of uh, you know systems or uh, uh, you know, there are different attitudes and approaches. As you know, some like directors like Ford, for example, didn't like to have rehearsals, and Renoir loved to have rehearsals. I am more like a Ford person. I think that when an actor, you work with him too much, it doesn't sound right. You know, if he says, I love you, 20 times the first time might have truth to it, but the 20th time, I don't think so. Anyhow, I, for me, it was, it was right. The thing that I, you know, so I didn't bring them two months ahead of time and I didn't have them sleep in the mosquitoes and, mm. you know, uh, conditions like in the 19th century. But, you know, I think that for me it was, a lot of times I said, take your time. This is not today. It is the 19th century. You know, try to be there. Try to be a part of the landscape. I think this was it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, how do you transform modern day you know, galley to the pioneers galley. Okay. Obviously, you know, to shoot in Roshpina today, which is Jauni, the ancient, uh, I mean, the Arab village, which it was at the time, to shoot today is impossible, you know, with the uh, jacuzzi, satellite dishes, <laughs> and, uh, you know, beautiful uh, uh, villas there, etc. 
So I had to look for places and I did find in a place nearby, so it is a mountainous area very similar to Rosh Pina near Safed, I found a place which is it's called Kibbutz Amiad and there the mountains are still bare and very biblical and so I shot a lot of it there. And uh, you know, when you also you have a problem of props, you have a problem of costumes. Luckily, uh, you know, the opera in the late 19th century, uh, you know, great operas were done. And in Israel, I found at the opera house in Tel Aviv, I found costumes that were right for the period. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was really, it, we worked, I think, at least half a year before the shooting of the film, going to flea markets, going to... Mm -hmm. Uh, theaters to uh, you know all kinds of uh, uh, storage of wardrobe etc to find the things and it, it's it's hard sometimes to connect to different types of audiences um, New York is its own yeah. animal opening at the quad cinema um, and this has been filmed around, around the world um, what have you seen audiences reactions to the film well, the film really, uh, you know, I took it, it was shown in Cambodia, it was shown in Goa, in India, it was shown in Bangalore, it was shown in China, in Chengdu, Hefei, and others, and it won prizes in, in other countries, in Romania it won, in China. And uh, I think there's something universal about the story, because, uh, I mean, as obviously, most of these people don't know anything about our history and about our tradition, and uh, still there's something again about this woman who... who you know, underwent through the pogrom, this terrible trauma, all her family were killed and she was, uh, you know, uh, traumatized in a terrible way and you see how she grows, you know, from a weak point, from being a stranger she slows, slowly falls in love with the landscapes and gets to know the people and becomes an important person in the group that story of a person, a weak person, growing stronger I think touches people, it doesn't matter wherever they are Sure. Um, another aspect of filmmaking is fundraising uh, okay. and that's and that's sometimes that the most difficult part you can have right, right. the best script you have the best actors right. but it all comes out to the, the cast right. uh, tell us how you got a, okay. you know around that you know um, if you look at my filmography you see that I've made many films and I succeed somehow without being rich uh, to make a film every three four years I come up with a film some of my films are extremely low budget, but for me it's very important to create. <clears throat> Luckily enough, for young people today, digital films is much less expensive than films in the old days. So, but I think the, for me now, the big uh, sponsor of movies is television. In Israel today, I think there's one very big uh, private producer who invests in films, and that's uh, uh, Edri, Moshe Edri who invests in a lot of Israeli films and has contributed to the success of a lot of the film industry. But I, for example, could not succeed raising money for this film. I approached the Film Foundation, so and got negative answers. But <clears throat> Israeli television uh, said to me, we'd be interested in a TV series. So the, the author and me, Shulamit Lapid and myself, we came to them, we said, okay, we'd agree to make a TV series. But first, let me make a film. Give me a year and a half to exploit it in the cinemas, and then I'll make for you a television uh, series. So they gave me the beginning, the seed money. After that, I went to, you know, Karen Avichai in Israel, Avichai Foundation. They also liked the story. They gave me some money. And then and, uh, the Tel Aviv Foundation gave me some more money. So it was a long process. I think I optioned the, the rights for the novel about 11 years ago. Wow. And then it took about uh, six, seven years until I found the right combination yeah. to make the film. And, and that's important, find the right, uh, the right money, the right people, the right, right. connections. Um, as you look forward uh, to, you know, to releasing this in other places, um, you, you talked a little bit about how it relates to different people. What are you hoping for the New York community to react? Listen. Uh, you know, because I'm an old-timer, I've tasted everything, you know. My first film was a big hit in New York. My first film was released here in 1970, and it was called The Dreamer. It played for over three months at Carnegie Hall Cinema. And, uh, you know, it was, there were these lines, you know, in, in America, unlike in Israel, you know, people wait outside, there were these lines, and it was just a fantastic experience, you know, it, the box office was sold out. And, was great so I, I hope that this something crazy would happen but today 
uh, I think the PR person told me of the, of the cinema called, told me that every week there are something like 25, 30 films, new films opening in New York. Obviously, there's so many temptations to the New Yorker. All these things happening at all these museums and places. So here there's a big competition. But I hope still the word will get around and people will come to see it. Yeah. Especially, it speaks to our Jewish history. Right. There's not a film, at least to my knowledge, yeah. that di really dives into the early Israel, the pioneers building the land, and the, um, the connections that are made. The, uh, when I was um, at one of the, the cemeteries, and we were by the, by the pioneers, by the Kinneret, uh -huh. and you saw like the, you know, you know what they went, went through, you know, from the, you know, dying from the diseases yeah, yeah. and the malaria. It's like it really, it, 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 it worked. You're, you're, you're learning about the seeds of, of the right, state, which right, is right. truly unique. Right, right. And uh, there's not really a film that, at least I've seen, that really goes into that. So it's, a, it's, it's exciting to see a different spin on that. You know, there have been, of course, Hema Yuasara, they were ten by Baruch Dinar, and there was, a, I think, The Dreamers by Barabash, and there were a few others. But I think, again, you know, if I can uh, tap on my own shoulder, say that there is something, and th this is what the Israeli critics have written, that it's, it's a human story about basically a love story, but in the background there is that story of, uh, you know, the beginning of the materialization of Zionist, Zionism, and, uh, uh, but there is something believable in it, and that's, that was my aim. As you can see, Geoni is a powerful film about love and showed us how pioneers gave their all to help found the modern state of Israel. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching. Thank you.